Hey, eSkate world, it's eSkate Ooligan, and we got ourselves a contender. Weighing in at 31 pounds, 0 ounces, total length of 45 inches, total width of 13 inches, we have the Even GTS Carbon Super. Now, I could have done a normal unboxing. You guys have all seen boxes. You've all seen the way that they put these in boxes. I wanted to do something a little bit different and lay it out all before you that you could see what came with my Even GTS Carbon Super. Now, the one thing that I do want you to be aware of is that there are some components that were added for me and some components that I have upgraded and I'll go over those with you just so that you know some of those components may not come if you order this particular board. It needs to be on your list. Hey, let's get into some of the components real quick. Obviously, you get the board. You will notice that there are a set of off-road tires these are the 175 millimeter. You can get this, you can get this board with 175s, 155s, 125s if you want to. I ordered it with the 175s. Shout out to Eavin. They also included the 125s in for me so that I could cover them on the channel. And you notice that I'm rocking the cloud wheels, the 120 millimeter cloud wheels. I love the cloud wheels. I'm rocking them right now on this. I'm rocking them on several of my other boards. So I have a multitude of setups of wheels that will that, that I can put on this board, but the 125s may not come with your board. Also, I did an upgrade on the hubs of my wheels. So I paid an additional small fee to do the CNC uh, hubs here and I also did the CNC hubs on the 125s. They are out of metal and they're a little bit heavier but they look dope as all get out. I mean the red with this board looks it, it it's sexy. Okay now also coming along with this board you do get for a while, I'm not going to say you're always going to get this, but for a period of time, Even is including in the handle, which will go on the front so that you can lift the board and pull the board. Also, for a short period of time, Even is including the bash guard. We'll talk a little bit about this bash guard. It came with the traditional uh, uh, sprocket covers. But I went ahead and put on the bash guard. I just like to protect those motors. Down here, we have a 50.4 volt, 5 amp charger. This charger does come with a fan. It's got a fan built into it. So it is a heavy duty charger. I also ordered an additional set of uh, 300 by 5 meter or 5M uh, uh, belts and I also ordered an additional set of 365 M belts. The 300s go with the cloud wheels and with the 125s and the 360s go with the off-road tires. Even also included in, which came with the board, they included in the traditional skate tool but this is a really nice skate tool. This is this is a this is a nice heavy metal one. It's not the traditional plastic ones. This is a really nice skate tool. Plus, they also included in the hex key, or some people call it the Allen wrench key. This is a really nice tool to also carry in. That was included in there. And last but not least, well, it's not actually last, but they also included in uh, the remote. We're going to talk a little bit about that remote, so stay tuned with that. And also included in it, they included several parts, including main bearings. Sometimes it's hard to source those main bearings that go in your hubs. Plus, they also included a series of uh, your traditional bearings to go in your wheels. 
several small washers, several small bolts. Uh, <clears throat> this is a really nice packet of additional parts in here. So I do have to give some props out to Eovin, and I'm going to pronounce it Eovin. They put together a really nice package of which the vast majority of this is going to come if you ordered the board. I did some upgrades, okay? So that's going to be up to you as to what, how you proceed with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the table. I'm going to get down to just the board, and we're going to talk about this board. Ready? As I said, when I opened the box and I saw this board and I saw the attention to detail of this board, I fell immediately in love with the board. Now, if I had to grade it strictly on looks alone, this thing would get a 10 out of 10, without a doubt. It is a dope looking board. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. One of the things that caught my eye immediately is number one, I love the maroon color. I love maroon. Uh, a lot of times you'll see me in a, in a shacket that's maroon or I've got maroon hats, I've got maroon everything. I love maroon. This carbon fiber deck is maroon. It's not your traditional black, it is maroon. And, and with the black added to it, it is a great looking board. Now let's talk a little bit about it. Earlier I said it was 45 inches long. That is basically from wheel to bash guard. If we talk about just the deck alone, the deck is about 40 inches by 10 inches. So it is a big board. I'm gonna lay the board down just a little bit here because there's a couple things I wanna point out to you. This is a very flat board. A lot of our my other boards are a little bit more concave. So I'm a little reluctant to say that this is a concave deck. The shoulders or wings do have a lift on the edge of them. It's just a very minute lift. I'm gonna say maybe a quarter of an inch of a lift from here to here. So um, there is enough to basically lock your feet in, but this is a very flat board. Also, in the center of this board, there is the W hump. So right here, we, I can feel it when I put my feet or my hands down. I can feel that slight hump in the middle. Now, I'm a person that really likes that because I have a high arch and that, that W center part really lands right in my arch and it makes me feel really connected to the board. But the thing of it is, being that this is a flat board, I did notice a difference compared to some of my other boards that are a little bit more concave uh, as far as my feet being able to go toes or being able to go heels. Also, you will notice that this is not a, this, these are drop through trucks, okay? It's a drop through deck, but it is not a drop deck. You notice that there is, there's a very minor drop from our tail down into our deck and from our nose in. Some of our other boards are much more pronounced as far as that dip so that when you put your feet in on this board, there's not as much of a shoulder to rest your feet up against or put your feet up against. Now, I often found myself on this particular board, my feet were not completely out with the nose and the tail. I actually found my feet about midpoint of the actual shoulders of this deck. So I have a little room to extend my stance or I can bring my stance in if I want to. But overall, the deck on this, I, I really like it. I love the color of it, okay? And I love the design. I love the fact that they put the hump in the middle. But to me, I wish it was just a little bit more concave. Deal breaker? Not at all, okay? But... Overall, a great job on this particular board. Now, let's just take for just a second and let's talk about the accents. 
even went as far as on our truck mounts, notice that we have the red accent plate here, and we've got the red accents on the motors, the motor mounts. If I pull the board this way, you notice that we have the same accents even underneath with our plate mounts for our trucks. Same way back here. And then even in, since this is a double kingpin, even in the uh, board side kingpin, we actually have some red accents. So these guys did an outstanding job of designing a board that has some really good looks and some really good lines to it. Now, let's talk for just a second. We're gonna stick with the board for a minute. On the bottom side of the board, you do see our on and off switch, as well as we have our charging port right here. The charging port does have a rubber stopper that goes in to keep it sealed up. There is no real cover over the, uh, the power button, so hopefully that's sealed up really well because we do have our, our drive wheels right back here and we wanna make sure that that's not causing a problem with any moisture or anything like that. Okay, we're gonna start from the front and move back. We do have the 12 inch trucks on here. These are forged trucks and I am rocking the 120 cloud wheels. I love the cloud wheels. You're gonna notice that practically every board that I have is gonna have cloud wheels on it. Now remember, this board came with a couple other options. I've got the 125s as well as I have the uh, 175 millimeter off-road tires. They are a little heavier. They do have the CNC center hubs, so they are a little bit heavier even on top of that, but they are a really nice tire that I'm looking forward to actually testing out and comparing to the, uh, to the cloud wheels. Okay, we've already talked about the deck a little bit, but going through the top of the deck, there's a series of screws that we can take the uh, top off and get to the battery. Okay, notice that I said we can get to the battery because we're gonna talk about the, the ESC here in just a second. So we're moving back. We've got our, got our mounts to get to our battery in here. The battery on this is a 12S4P battery. It is rocking 852 watt hours. That's a pretty good set of rides. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint. I took this out for a ride. I, I got it. I went through and I set it up. I charged it, did everything that I needed to do to it. Then today I took it out and I took it out for a 25 mile ride. It was 55 degrees today. I'm 190 pounds and I got 25 miles out of this battery and I still had 36% of the battery left. So I am really, I'm really excited about that 12S 4P battery. The only thing I wish is maybe it was a 13S 4P like what's in one of my other boards, but I'll, I'll handle the 12S 4P. I think 25 miles on a day like today, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get 30 plus miles. Remember, I'm a 190 pound rider. Moving back to the back here, notice earlier I said battery. Here's the ESC, and it's actually a VSC, okay? So this is a fully programmable VSC from the remote, and we're gonna talk about this remote after just in a little while. But this is a fully programmable right from the remote, and I will tell you that I started digging into it last night and my head started spinning because there's so much customization that you can do to this board just from the remote, unbelievable. So I'm very impressed with that. This VSC is actually covered by a very nice piece of plastic to protect, uh, it's rubber, excuse me, a very nice piece of rubber that is going to actually uh, protect it, keep it sealed up and, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with the way that they did that. Moving around to the back of the board, we're gonna bring this board around. Again, remember, I'm rocking the 120 cloud wheels. I really love, the, the back end of this board looks great. Number one, I love the red accents with the black. 
I also really like the fact that they included a bash guard. Now I'm going to talk to you for a second about the bash guard. I'm not going to say everyone's bash guard is like this, but mine was. When I went and put the bash guard on, this bash guard actually, once I put it on and I ran the wheels, one of the 15 tooth um, pulleys for the motor actually rubbed into this, into the, the bash guard. So what I did is I went down to my local hardware store. I got a number eight set of black washers that are 0 0.032 of an inch. And I actually put them between the motor mount and the mount for the bash guard. And it gave enough clearance to actually clear this pulley so it does not rub. So I was able to get my bash guard on, which I really like having the bash guards there. And... Um, I didn't have to worry about uh, damaging these anymore. It did run a little circle in it, which kind of made me a little mad, but it is what it is. So I'm not saying everyone's will do that, but if they do, just go down to your local hardware store, get a .032 number eight washer, and uh, stick it in between. It'll take care of the issue. The motors that are on here are the 6374 motors. These motors are putting out 3,500 watts. So you've got a combined wattage of 7,000 coming out of this board. I will tell you right now, if you are a person that is heavy on torque and heavy on speed, these motors put it out. I am extremely impressed with this set of motors, with this VSC and the setup of this board. And we'll talk just a little bit more about that as we, as we get into it. Again, the deck, it, uh, just the deck alone is about 40 inches by 10 inches wide. When I gave you the measurements earlier, it included the wheels, so the complete width. This board does only weigh about 31 pounds. It's one of my lighter boards, short of the G3 that's sitting over here, but that's an extremely light board, okay? Um, other than that, that the, the trucks on this, oh, forgot to talk about the trucks. Let's talk about the trucks. This has the double kingpin trucks. I love double kingpin trucks. Yeah, they're not as stable at higher speeds, but um, they, these are actually pretty good. I got them fairly dialed in. Once it gets a little warmer out, we're supposed to get about six inches of snow here in the next couple of days. So once it gets a little warmer, I'll be able to dial them in. But I was doing 25 to 32 on this board with the double kingpins, and I was not getting any major speed wobble. So I just need to fine tune it a little bit. But I really do love the double kingpins because of the tight turning radius and the response to, the, to carves and turns and stuff like that. Extremely, extremely good job. Uh, other than that, that's basically the board. Um, it is it is a great board. I am I am overly impressed with it. But let's talk a little bit about the remote because we need to. Uh, number one, I do not like this remote, and there it's a, it's a major problem for me. Uh, number one, it is a very long, very straight remote. It does have a hook in the front, but it does not fit well in my hand. Now, I'm not going to say that's for everyone, but it does not fit well in my hand. And the dial, I had a hard time really feathering the dial in order to get my acceleration and my braking. Okay, so I do not like, I don't like the remote. Also, second thing. The little buttons, there's two little buttons right here. One's here and one's here. And I do mean they are little. One is your power button and one is your mode button. And they are hard to see and they're hard to see which one does what. And they're almost, if you got a set of gloves on, they are very hard to actually control. So I don't like it for that. The third thing that I don't like about, but I do kind of like, I do not like the size of this screen. It is extremely small, extremely small. It's about maybe the size of two postage stamps. So 
in my opinion, way too small of a screen. I think they could have designed this better to give a, a larger screen. However, with that being said, this screen is color. So for example, my battery indicators are in green. They do stand out a little bit better. They're extremely small, but they, they can't, they, um, they're in green, so I can see them better. Also, the speed is in white until you get above 25 miles per hour, then it switches into red, and it kind of alerts you, hey, be cautious because you're getting up there uh, in speed. So that is, that is a, a nice feature. One of the complaints that I do have is that a lot of the writing is extremely small. I, ha I often found myself having to really focus in on what I was looking at, which when I'm writing, I don't have time to really focus in on that because that's taking my eyes off what's coming up in front of me. So I think they could have done a better job with the screen of this remote. Now we're going to dig into the uh, one of the other things that I do not like about this is that the odometer is not on the main screen. You actually have to go into the sub screen to see the odometer. Now the trip odometer is on the main screen, but the odometer is not. So I didn't like that a lot. Now let's talk just a little bit about this remote and the VSC. The VSC, first of all, on this remote, there are four settings. There's a low, a D for drive, an S for super, I think is what it is. And then there is a level above that, which is R, which is race. Okay, and I will tell you, there is a difference between those. Uh, I started out in low just to see how the board would actually do and I puttered along about probably 15 miles per hour and that lasted all of about probably two blocks. Then I dropped it up to D which is a little bit faster and I immediately A noticed that the torque, the speed was a whole lot faster and it actually caught me a little bit off surprise. I rode that for a while uh, I think I rode it for at least a mile because I did a mile, then I brought it back to the shop. I went through, checked everything, make sure it was good. Then I went back out and I rode it just a little bit longer with it in the D mode. And then I took it up to the S mode, which is sport mode. Not super, it's sport mode. And I really picked up a lot of torque and a lot of speed. I did the pretty much the rest of my riding in sport and did not have a whole lot of trouble with it. I, um, I actually kind of liked it. There were a few times that it caught me off guard. So in this, you're able to go in and control your VSC. So for example, when I put the cloud wheels on, I went into the sub menu on this remote and I told it that I was running a 40 tooth hub I was running a 15 tooth motor drive and I was running a 120 millimeter tire and it automatically changed everything for me. Now, this is the cool thing. I'm riding through the neighborhood and we have several of the signs that are radar controlled. So I hit my first one, I looked at it, I was doing 22, I looked down, 22. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. So I get to the next one and I thought, I just wanna see you know, how accurate this is. I look at it, I'm doing 21, I look down, it, was, it said 20, and all of a sudden it clicked to 21. So I, I was very impressed with that. So I was able to change my wheel size, I'm also able to change my, uh, my, the size of my hubs, my teeth on my hubs, as well as if I did put a different uh, drive sprocket on, I'm able to do that. So I'm able to adjust that. Because obviously when I put the uh, all-terrain tires on, that has a much larger tooth. I just come in and I change it in here. Now remember earlier I said that we had basically four uh, modes in here. We have the low, the D, the S, and the R. What you can also do in here is you can go into the sub-menu for low and you can set the acceleration sensitivity on the dial for the low. You can also set the braking sensitivity for the low. 
Then you can go to the D and you can set the sensitivity for acceleration and braking. And you can go to the S and you can do the same thing. So in essence, what you're able to do is you're able to come in and set the acceleration mode and the braking mode different for each one of these. It's not like you get four, uh, four uh, settings for your braking and those four settings get put across the different speed modes. You can actually set that different on each one. This is the first VSC that I have owned and I'm telling you, I, I like what I see. I don't like the remote though, okay? So there's a tremendous amount of capacity capability built into this remote and being able to on the fly change the VSC that's in this, okay? Now, also when I was writing this, very smooth takeoffs and very smooth stops. I did not change my braking. The braking, I think, is set at right at 50. You can go negative, uh, negative to positive. So you've got a very large group of settings in there that you can set your braking and your acceleration at. I left it just for the time being because this is the first time I was on it. I left it set where it was so that I could get used to it. Then when it's a little warmer out, I'll actually go in and I'll fine tune uh, my, my different settings on this. But other than that, the ride, let's talk about the ride. Smooth starts, no twitching. As I've said before, my Propel over here, which has a Ling Yi in it, it actually is twitchy on the starts. And I talked the other day about the Meepo Hurricane. The Meepo Hurricane has a Ling Yi in it, but it had very smooth starts because they had tailored it. This has the VSC, very, very smooth starts. Same way with the braking. Again, I did not mess with the braking, but very smooth and gradual stops. Now, I'm going to probably, obviously, increase that, but I, have a, I am so excited about the customizations all the way from the wheels to the VSC that I can do. I just wish they'd have done a better job with the remote, and I, and I would encourage them. So, here is the Eovin GTS Super, Carbon Super, and I think they did an outstanding job with this. I am really looking forward to this. If you are a junkie that loves torque, if you're a junkie that loves speed, this is a board that definitely needs to be on your list. You know how much I love my Zeus and I still love that board. This one might give it a run for its money. Once it gets warmer out, we're going to put them to the test. Because I want to be fair to all these boards, I am not going to come back and do a speed test, a range test, anything like that when it's only 50, 45, 50, maybe 55 degrees out. That's not fair to the board, okay, because it's not optimal conditions outside. So once it gets a little bit better, we're going to do some range tests. We're going to do some comparisons with this. But my initial reaction to this, after 25 miles on this board, that's 25 miles in one day. After 25 miles, I'm liking this board. This is a very nice board. In the very, very near future, I am going to compare this board, the GTS, to the Zeus, to the Hurricane. I am going to do a side-by-side -side comparison so that you can see those three boards and and you're going to see the reason why i put them kind of in the same class as one another so look for that video to come out very soon okay eSkate world there you go you have seen the even gts carbon super in the maroon color with a set of 120 cloud wheels and I'm telling you, this board probably needs to be on your list if you're looking for a torquey board, a speed board, and a board that is just freaking sexy as hell. 
Eskay Dooligan here. I hope you have a great day.